Ah. Hello, and welcome to the great saga that's about to begin. Here in the pond, we're gonna do what everyone has done before. Do a system of who's the best Disney villain. But unlike everyone else, we're not going by poll or opinion. We're going by formula. <laughs> doing it by formula, we have to follow some rules. And one of the biggest rules is this had to be pure Disney. So no Fox, no Pixar, and no Touchstone Pictures. This had to be from the mouse itself. The second rule, this has to be villains that have been on the big screen. So no TV or directed video. That, you're excluded. Sorry. Sorry, Bill Cipher. I know in my Gravity Falls review, you deserve a part of the villains list, and I believe you do. But Formula has rules, and we're gonna hold by them. I so want him to be in here. We've noticed there's a weird trend right now with Disney animated flicks, and that is the villain twist, or the villain's not fully there. They're not, I am a villain, or I'm the villain. They're not there. And holding that as such, they're a different, there's a different separation. And you can see the line where this separation began. And it was frozen. So the vi this villain list will go as far as Tangled. Frozen and beyond, is a different set of villains. They've made themselves into something new. Is that their fault they're on the list? Yes, it is. Disney's trying something new. They're holding back. And we're not looking for guys that are holding back. We are looking for the true dark-blooded, I am the master of evil. And we're gonna see who is the master of evil. Whew. via through formula. And the formula is split into two different halves. There's the mathematical and the essay. With the mathematical, we're gonna put the villain slots on a certain number that they're gonna be judged by. And that is one through four. To be honest, one through three is gonna be more basic. A four is where you're gonna have to really do it right. You have to have that, not just charisma, but design or that adrenaline of power, something unfounded that puts you on that four. And some of the villains that we're gonna go through may get that four, but it's gonna be very hard. And if they get it right, some of this may be obvious, some of it may not be. And these slots of what on the number that are going to get the numbers well this is an animated movie so design is going to be there and design is kind of obvious the way how you look your colors your way how you're drawn also your actor all of that is going to go in account on your design and the other slot is presence now this one's a little bit more interesting because yeah, we're gonna judge you on your presence, but also we're gonna time you in your film. Now the timer is not really meant for where we're putting them. The timer is more when we're gonna compare each and every one of these villains. Because you may be on screen a lot, but does that, whole, does that mean you lose your presence? I don't know, I have to watch your film. Because not everyone is going to be a Darth Vader. But yet not everyone is going to be Joaquin Phoenix Joker. Vader was not in that much, but his presence was in the film. Joaquin Phoenix Joker, he was there almost the entire film. And yet he still held a certain unique presence. If you compare the two who held presence, it's going to be obvious Darth Vader. 
But yet at the same time, you can't ignore what Joaquin Phoenix did. So if you compare these two in their times, it puts a weird comparison. Who's the better villain? And through presence, this, these timers may help or hurt. It may promote or demote. He was in longer and had that bigger flow. He was bare, better, but he wasn't in as much. And she just owned the screen when she was there. Whew. We don't know what's gonna happen with promotion, with presence. And the other slot, power. <laughs> this one's gonna be a little bit more obvious, like design. Their power in magic, their power in politics, their power in words. That is going to be rated on that number system. And then we have the wild card, card section. Both mathematical and writ essay have this wild card. And the wild card for the number system is henchmen. Well, because the henchmen is not for every villain. Not all villains have them. But when they do, this could make or break. Are you more dependent on your henchmen so that knocks you down? Or your henchman is so loyal and unfoundedly there for you, it helps you. Well, they rebel. Well, that, that hurts you. If they help you succeed, but yet you're not fully dependent on them, that you could be independent from them. The henchman is a weird wild card. And this one will affect the villain a whole lot more than you realize. So some of your big villains may not be up as high because of the henchman card. It's a wild card, and not everyone has it. Whew, and that's just the mathematical side. And we're doing this with each and every Disney villain. This is going to be a big friend. And now the essay side. And the main essay side is what makes a villain a villain. And it's going to help us a whole lot. Because the essay side is acts of villainy. That's right. I am going to go through each and every Disney vil each and every Disney film from the beginning to Tangled. And I'm going to do an essay on what made them a villain. I am writing down everything. I'm going to be unbiased. Villains that I don't like, I am going to give you the best essay ever. Each and one of these, I'm going to try to deliver an A+, plus, no matter who you are. Your acts of villainy will depend on you, not me. This is film for film. Your acts of villainy will make sure, A, you're the best of the best, but B, where you go. We're using the essay to figure out which group you are in. Because, face it, there's some of the best of the best, the weakest of the weak, and are you really a villain? And the group sections are red, which is the fires of hell, <laughs> yellow, which is you're in neutral ground, and green, where it's basically you're almost a good guy. Almost, but you're still a villain. And the acts of villainy will help us to figure out where you are. So these essays are going to be really important. And how you go will go determine where you are. But the wild card for essays is there too. And that is the villain's song. And again, not all villains sing. Like not all villains have henchmen. And the song may make or break. But not really break. I think the song just more like... The, the song gives us more details about the villain. This may go into the acts of villainy. Someone like Radigan may go up because in his song for Radigan, he's drowned with widows and orphans. That's it, wait. That's not in the movie, but you sang about it and praised it. That can't may pull him up the ranks a bit or put him down compared to other people once he's being compared. And we're going to figure out, with, through essays, where they go. 
and more than that, but where they go even more. Because there's high and low in each one of these levels. So there's a high red, low red, high yellow, low yellow, high green, low green. And with the acts of villainy and the villain's song, this is gonna help us determine where they are. And once we have everyone done, we're gonna compare everyone. Beginning with acts of villainy, who goes where, and from that, we're gonna use the numbers then to get you more details. So this, is, this formula is comparing each villain to a villain. Who's the baddest of the bad, the worst of the worst, Disney's greatest villain ever? We're gonna find out through the formula. And this may not be, way, this may be way more than one film. And this is gonna be a long time but we're gonna do our best. And this is gonna be whew, a rough ride of a show. <laughs> and also, here's the unique thing. We do not know who's gonna win. We're learning with you. So throw down in the comments who you think is gonna go, who's gonna rise on top, and also who's gonna be the underdog. Because I'm putting my money on the winner being Honest John. Yes, I'm going. I'm thinking he, he's going to win, and the underdog for me, I'm putting my money on Captain Hook. The guy's an underrated villain. We all see him as this comedic character, and no one takes him as serious. But through the formula, I'm putting my money that he's going to jump high, because you're not going to see him the same way again when this is done. And Newt, who is your who you think's gonna win, and who's your underdog? It's tough. I, I think I'm gonna put my money on Ursula to win, <laughs> and maybe not so much an underdog, but still my underdog pick is going to be the stepmom from Cinderella. Ooh. Huh. Why you see her as an underdog, or do we have to do a video? Well, we might have to wait and do the video. All right. <laughs> so, but join us in the comments who you think is the underdog or who you think is going to win. And well, through the formula, we'll find out. And also, one thing I almost forgot. Through these villains and understanding them and where they are, there's going to be a little side bonus. The history of the villain's song. With this, we're going to learn who was the first to sing? Who was the first, who held the crown the longest of the best villain songs? And who stands out? And that made, this is just a side discovery thing. And it is very interesting to figure out what villain songs stood out and held long and which ones was the first to sing. And how it affects the character and movie. This is gonna be a fun ride. And this guy's gonna be my best friend. There's a lot of Disney movies we're gonna go through. And more than that, we're gonna analyze and go through them to see who's the worst of the worst. Who owns the dark, who owns the black heart and rules with that dark, cold fist that says, I am the best. Join us through this year long quest. And this is gonna be a doozy. And so, hop on in. And this is the bullfrog and the newt scene. Hop on. <laughs> but the underdog, Temi, I think I lost my train of thought.